Three victims were targeted. Five alleged gang members. A Chicago rapper who was gunned down. Men in two different vehicles. Facing federal charges. Saw people running in every direction. When chaos broke out on Oak Street off the Mag Mile. Man pronounced dead is a well-known Chicago rapper. Known as FBG. The O Block 5. O Block is located on 64th and King Drive in a place called Parkway Garden Apartments. It received the name O-Block in honor of gang member Odie Perry, who was allegedly shot and killed by rival gang member Jakira Barnes, or SDLKI. At the time, Drill was becoming one of the most popular branches of rap, and O-Block would definitely leave his footprint. Chief Keith was the first rapper to put O-Block on the map. Soon after, Lil Dirt began skyrocketing to fame and eventually became the face of Old Block's record label, OTF, or Only the Family. Today, he is worth an estimated 32 mil, and naturally, he decided to share the spotlight with other talented members such as King Von. Von also brought lots of recognition to Old Block. His treacherous reputation, commonly heard in his verses, helped him reach stardom very quickly. Yet, even though he was known to many as a ruthless killer, he tragically lost his life after being shot many times in Atlanta while throwing an album release party. Nevertheless, the name O-Block still thrives. Some of their allies include THF, 600, and Lamron. They have several enemies, but perhaps the most infamous one is STL. FBG Duck, being a very prominent part of the game, developed their record label called FBG and Cloud Boys ENT. Being that O Block and STL are actually only a street apart, their feud became more and more tense. But I'm sure no one ever imagined that the unspeakable slang of FBG Duck would occur right in the middle of the historic district of Chicago in the Gold Coast, ostensibly by the O Block Five. So Carlos Offer, AKA, Los, Los, a longtime member and rapper of Old Block, who also goes by the name Los Adosa, supposedly played a key role in the death of FBG Duck. He bought the black 2016 Ford Fusion that was claimed to be one of the cars used when the five slid on Duck. The car was even identified by witnesses. Unfortunately for him, he didn't dot all his eyes. He ended up falsifying documents, which stated he was more financially inclined than he actually was, which deemed him as ineligible to purchase a vehicle. After the dealership conducted an inspection of the paperwork, he was asked to immediately return the vehicle. Some speculate that the hit wasn't planned and therefore had to be quick, but it was also haphazard. After being brought in and questioned about his connection with the vehicle, he actually confessed that indeed it was his signature on the paperwork. Mr. Offer purchased a vehicle that was used in this murder and assault on or about July 28th from a dealership in the Chicagoland area. During a post-arrest interview, Mr. Offer acknowledged that there were pictures of him at the dealership and then next to the car that was used in the murder, Mr. Offord identified himself in the photos in the vehicle that was used as his vehicle. Mr. Offord acknowledged that it was his signature on the purchasing documents for the vehicle. And, and I'll come back to this part when we get the history and characteristics of Mr. Offord, but Mr. Offord made some statements in the financing application for that vehicle that were not true with respect to his employment. And so days later, the dealership reached out to Mr. Offer to return the vehicle, which ultimately he did. The Fusion, along with the Chrysler, had been spotted on several cameras heading to and from the incident. Kenneth Roberson, a.k.a. Kenny Mac. Kenny Mac, although an O'Blockian, is an official member of Dipset. It is hearsay 
that when Kenny received the news that Duck's location had been dropped, he was not only willing, but even eager to join the horde of hitters. He was so anxious, in fact, he paid no never mind to his previous charges, from which he was currently out on bail, which just so happened to be a felony bond. In the earlier part of 2020, Kenny was accused of shooting two women and killing one man in Dalton. It was rumored that at that time, he and one other shooter began firing at 31-year-old Lorenzo Moore, killing him, and into a van which sat the two women. It just so happened that when he was charged with this particular shooting, he was actually out on another bond for a pending case from 2019. The police claim that in this situation, he was found in possession of multiple weapons while out on parole. He was on parole for armed robbery. Christopher Thomas, AKA C Thing. Old Block C Thing is also one of the accused five. Now, as we all know, the internet detectives are a force to be reckoned with. They will literally tag the police department and the crime they are so convinced you committed. Watch what happened to C-Thing as he went live from the block one day. You ain't never touched no cold. Yeah, you right. I didn't do shit. Ain't never no Ooh, I'm off this shit. They be saying all type of weird ass shit, bro. A real video in Alabama, where that? You ain't never touched no cold. Yeah, you right. I didn't do shit. Ooh, I'm off this. In fact, he was trolled on other occasions as well. <laughs> I'm really the police under them. There's really the police behind us. Just blow you done or you finish. I never heard of nobody. I promise, I never heard of nobody. That's not even me. <laughs> never did nothing to nobody. I don't know why y'all keep saying that long shit. I never did nothing to nobody. What the f Never did nothing to nobody. I'm a good boy. Once the fans sank their talents in, it was only a matter of time before the police began declaring him as a suspect. Charles Liggins, AKA C Murder. C Murder was said to have been caught on surveillance footage along with others, sprinting down the stairwell in Parkway Gardens or O Block, and then hopping into the passenger side of a Chrysler that was traced via seven camera footages along the route used to arrive at the Gold Coast. Adjacent to the person driving and with one in the back, see murder via hearsay, loaded his weapon in anticipation for arrival. The fusion, which is always mentioned first, presumably led and the Chrysler followed. Allegedly, after the fusion's passengers hopped out and opened fire, C. Murder and the rear passenger followed suit. It is believed by the FBI from eyewitness testimony, C. Murder targeted Doug's girlfriend, striking her twice in the wrist. It has been said that she tried to fire back, but her gun jammed. Others believe it was actually Doug who returned fire. A 28-year-old woman who was sitting in a car near the incident, she was shot in the hand. A security guard at a store across the street who just started his job two days ago tells us he saw this whole thing happen. It's a tragedy. I don't understand why it happened. I don't even know what caused it. It was, it was so calm and peaceful. And those two gentlemen, I thought maybe they was together, but one just started shooting at the other. And I thought maybe they was together, but one just started shooting at the other. The next day, the police spotted the Chrysler near the 2100 block of Gunderson in Berwyn and towed it. After being thoroughly searched, a paper, we see Murder's Facebook and IG account 
along with phone numbers for he and his baby mama were found, which is how he became a suspect. Marcus Smart, AKA Muwap. Muwap, who is known for being fearless and vengeful, is rumored to have also been present at the time of Duck's death. He was right-hand man to King Vaughn and was actually present when Vaughn took his last breath. It is also rumored that he had direct involvement with the death of Can't Get Right, Motor, and Side. Muwap is presumed to have been riding shotgun with Los in the fusion. He would have been one of the first persons to open fire, which means he allegedly either targeted Duck or perhaps he may have even been responsible for putting three to four rounds in his own cousin. That's right. It has been rumored that the third person with FBG Duck was Muwap's cousin, Day Day. According to the FBI, as Duck, quote unquote, Day Day and girlfriend arrived on the scene, five almost simultaneously stormed out of O Block as well. Some say they had an inside man. Day Day. Day Day, cousin to Muwap, couldn't have been in a better position to set up FBG Duck, according to most people. Here's a theory that some believe. On the day they entered the Gold Coast, Dede dropped his location to his cousin Muwap. Dede knew that since Duck was only there to buy a gift for his son's birthday, the O Block 5 would have to haul ass getting there, or else they missed the perfect opportunity to commit an ambush on Duck. As the three exited the store, Duck suddenly began to realize the ugly truth. He had been set up by none other than Dede. And with him being only at arm's length from Day Day, Duck stepped back, cocked his pistol, and fired four rounds into Day Day before the gun abruptly jammed. What took place in only 15 seconds probably felt like minutes for Duck. He did the only thing he could do at that moment and dove for cover. As a symphony of shell casings lit at the street, Duck took on a flurry of bullets. He was hit approximately 16 times according to the medical examiner. Witnesses looked on in horror and disbelief as Duck lay fighting for his life. He was rushed to Northwestern Memorial Hospital where he took his last breath, leaving many loved ones to mourn his tragic departure. Others believe on the day of the murder, Duck's girlfriend went live from the Gold Coast and that's how they were able to get their location. Either way, Chicago lost another legend to futile violence. When Duck wrote the song Slide, he took a trendy piece of Chicago and distributed it with the world. His name became known globally, and many of those people shared in the heartbreak of his loss. Chicago is a place where it has become normal to diss the dead. Perhaps one day, it will come to a cease, and their youth can finally begin to heal. Everyone should be afforded the opportunity to see old age. But with each passing day, it seems less and less likely. Our prayers are with you, Chicago. This has been the story of the Old Block Five. R.I.P. FBG Duck. You will be missed. Oh, and yeah, Zell was also a part of the ambush, but he committed suicide to avoid any type of repercussion. Once again, R.I.P. FBG Duck. Thank you.